Hello, friends. Welcome to the Lug Life Podcast. My name is Adam. My name is Sherry. Sherry Beth, what episode is this? 24. We've made it two baker's dozens. Well, okay. No? Nope. Dang it. I'm going to get this one of these days. <laughs> uh, so you guys know we had a a bit of a heavy month in May when it comes to podcast topics. Yeah. Right? We talked all about relationships. I want to thank you guys so much for the feedback on all of that. It was super cool to uh, get so many positive thoughts, positive messages uh, from you guys about the different relationship topics we talked about. But we thought, you know what? That was all heavy. Yeah, and uh, necessary, but heavy. So let's have some dang fun. Yeah. So I think that what we're going to do, certainly for this episode, maybe for the next one or two, is lighter topics that are just just more fun. Just more fun. Um, like this one is towing the line, I think. Like it's going to be funny, but I think that it's um, anxiety a little bit. Because what is more <laughs> fun than rage? Well, sure. So what we're talking about today <laughs> are things that like induce irrational rage in us. Yes. And I think as you guys hear some of these, two things are going to happen. Number one, you are going to say, oh my God, me too. Right. And then you're also going to say, oh, I have a whole bunch more to add to your list. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Both of those things. So Sharon and I sat down, uh, we asked some of you guys, what are some things that are like just induce irrational rage. There right. are things that should not get that level of response from you. Correct. But absolutely. But they totally do. They totally yeah. do. <laughs> There's some on here that are more me, some on here that are more Sherry, uh, some on here that for sure are both of us. Yep. We have 12 of them, mm -hmm. and we're going to try to make it through this list without our heads exploding. Well, I don't know if that's yeah. going to happen. That's the goal. <laughs> I doubt it happens, though. Right. Sherry, we're going to start with something that is both of us. Yes. And I think, is this the one that we were just like, we need to do a podcast on this? Yep. This is the one that spurred this whole idea. Yes. So we went to Arby's for dinner yes. because super healthy. Also, you guys, Arby's is delicious. Right. O it's ode it's to, amazing. Ode to Arby's. I love you. I miss you. I miss you. Because this has been a while. It has been a while. But when we go to Arby's, one of the things that Sherry and I both get, because we love is the Arby sauce. Yep. It's delicious. It's delicious. And they with got, the curly fries. Oh man, the curly fries. So good. But there's a problem, Sherry. Ugh. What? <laughs> she shudders in hatred. What's the problem? Why <laughs> do they give you packets that you then have to tear open and then do what with? Like, how are you supposed to dip your curly fries in this? You're supposed to pour it on your fries when you're in the car? It's so dumb. And then you just have sauce everywhere? This is the dumbest thing like saucy fingers because Ugh. that's what you have to do so for us the thing that like induces irrational rage in us is the fact that arby's does not offer their arby sauce in like little cups in a container like every other fast food place like in what world is this the acceptable thing that you're handing people in your car or in their cars these packets what are they supposed to do with that i want to dip my curly fries i don't want to dump arby sauce over the top of my curly fries and then get sticky Arby sauce fingers. Correct. Arby's. Get it together. What the crap? <laughs> this is like when I go to Arby's and they hand me those little packets. Like, I want to throw them back at them. I'm going to be like, like oh, throw them. I want to be like, excuse me, is Mr. B's here? Because I'd like to talk. <laughs> I assume that's his name. Arby's. Arby's. No? Right. no. Well. So, so that's number one for us. And this is something that both of us, again, this is the thing that led to this podcast. Uh -huh. And you hand us those packets. I cannot. I can't. I just can't. I really, like, I understand that it's not, like, the workers who are choosing this, but no. I really, they're handing it to me, and they think that this is a good decision, and I just want to throw it back in their face. <sighs> if, by <laughs> chance, the one in a bajillion possibility that anyone from Arby's Corporate is listening, <laughs> for the love of all that is holy, for the cleanliness of our hands. For the love of your Arby sauce, because please. I want it. Please make it easier. <laughs> yes, please. Get it out of the dumb packets. <laughs> give us it something it can dunk in. Ugh. All right, Sherry. Next. <sighs> Hold on. I feel like we need like... <sighs> like do breathing exercises between We need breathing between exercises between these. <laughs> just to calm down a little bit. Okay. Now, the next one. This is more you than me. This one makes me so angry. <laughs> I know it does. And this is one that, that Adam actually brought up to me. Like when we were like, okay, what else can we add to the list? He's like, oh, I got one. He's like, this pisses you off every time without and it's so fail. true without fail so sherry what is this stickers that don't peel off okay so here's the, let me set the stage so we go to a store we buy something it's like oh we bought a new cup we bought a mug mm -hmm. it's like great let's go home and peel the mug off, or peel the sticker off and then wash this mug so we can use it oh what's that the sticker comes off in five hundred thousand little pieces or it doesn't come off at all 
<laughs> Sherry, how are you doing? I have words for the people who put these <laughs> stickers on there. And, and they're unkind, and I realize that. And the thing that's so frustrating to me about this, and this is much more frustration for you. <laughs> to me, it's just like I don't understand because sticker technology exists that allows us to put like easily peelable stickers on. Correct. Now, at the same time, I know that stickers that don't peel off cause irrational rage. Isn't there just like this unbelievable le le um, like feeling of accomplishment and just pleasure when you get a sticker that peels off perfectly and easily yes it's like oh i feel good now i it's oh i it's it's so calming yes. and so like <laughs> all is right in the world when i can just peel the sticker off mugs cups books oh do not put oh, a sticker boy. that will not peel off on a book here we don't go, guys. do it strap in <laughs> here we go i just uh it drives me crazy and Yes, like the sticker technology exists to not have these crappy stickers that peel off and they're tiny, tiny little, ugh, I can't. It makes me so mad. And he usually just like sits there and laughs at me while I'm fuming. Well, it's because- Smoke coming out of Smoke coming out of ears. And I will like, well, oh, we just came home from the store. We're hanging out in the living room. We're just like going through the stuff we bought. And I can look over and I can read on Sherry's face <laughs> if there's a sticker that is like this because she has changed from the- pleasant angel princess that she normally is <laughs> to this sticker rage fueled devil woman yeah. who is like on a terror to go after big sticker industry and don't tell me that there's like you know the goo gone stuff and all that kind of crap you i don't care you shouldn't have to. i shouldn't have to use another product to get your sticker off i just shouldn't have to wouldn't it be really ironic if the stickers on Goo Gone didn't come off. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't that be like the height of irony? It's like, what am I supposed to do? Okay, uh, so how how you doing? I need to check in on you. Oh, I'm fine. You sure? Because <laughs> it doesn't so much feel like you're fine. Well, you, let's go on to this next one because you had to explain what this was, and so you're this is going to be a you thing. This surprised me that you didn't know this term. Mm -mm. The term is rubbernecking. Yeah, I didn't know what it meant. Okay, so for those of you guys who maybe were also raised in. Fort Wayne, Indiana, where apparently this doesn't happen. Rubbernecking. No, it happens. I just didn't know it was called that. So it's when you're driving down the road and all of a sudden, oh man, traffic's backed up. <laughs> there must be a horrible accident ahead. Right. And you get ahead and like there's a car with a flat tire along the side. But 5,000 people felt like they needed to stop and look as they passed, which then slowed everybody else down. Oh my God, just keep driving. There's nothing to see here. Or in Alaska. What? Moose. Oh, moose alongside the road? That's true. Okay, if you have been here more than eight <laughs> seconds, you've seen a moose. You do not need to slow down your car to to look at the moose. You don't need to. Well. I know that you do yeah, every time. Yeah, I love But moose. it drives me crazy when it backs up traffic. Oh, if it backs up traffic, I won't do if it. If you're the only one on the road, fine. Exactly. Stop, take a picture, do what you need to do. But it's if there are cars behind you, keep it moving. But, like, that's the thing is that rubbernecking is takes into consideration no one else right <laughs> right and the crazy thing is is that on like a busy road all it takes is like one person to stop and look at the box alongside of the road <laughs> to now delay three thousand other people behind them right don't don't do it drive just drive look forward text and drive and eat your burritos while you drive like the rest of us okay. stop no but also please don't text. oh and please don't text and drive sorry uh <laughs> stop rubbernecking that for sure is one that annoys me like when i am backed up in traffic and i just think oh the worst thing must be ahead mm -hmm. and then there's that moment where you see what it was <laughs> that was causing everything and i'm just like oh hell no what's funny is that like usually if i'm backed up like that and i assume that it's like a really bad accident or something i start praying for the people yeah and then i'm just like are you freaking kidding me you start praying against those other people <laughs> right all right prayers change now we're going on the offensive i hope you get a flat tire that's exactly right oh my gosh so rubbernecking is one of those things that to me oh whew. all right sherry deep breath the next one is both you and i yes and you and i have this conversation every, every time. time we every see every single time <laughs> okay this is so Picture with me. I feel like I have to paint a lot of pictures for you guys. Yeah. You're pulling into a store and there's some people walking out of the front door of the store and they're like crossing the, the driving way. Why, why would I call it that? The parking lot? <laughs> what, a, what a moron. Um, except they're, they don't cross right in front of you. They diagonal cross. And what I mean. And they mosey. And they mosey. What I mean is that when you're crossing a street or a parking lot or whatever, 
you go from point A to point B, the shortest distance to get you across the street as fast as possible. Especially when there's cars waiting for you. Of course. Mm -hmm. Except there's people who go diagonal taking two or three times or longer to get across the street rather than just like cross the street and then walk straight to your destination. Right. Don't go diagonal. 90 degree angles. I'm not saying, and I probably shouldn't say this on a podcast for the public, I'm not saying that I ever would run somebody down with my vehicle, <laughs> but if I ever do... It's because you deserved it. It's a diagonal crosser. Yep, for sure. When we go to the store and this happens, like both Sherry and I audibly in the car are just like, walk across the street. Or, you know, like, give, like, the little hop like you're pretending to walk faster. Like, Ugh. first of all, go straight across the street, not at a diagonal. But don't mosey, especially when there's cars waiting for you. And I understand, like, sometimes there's some kind of, like, disability. There's some kind of whatever. Like, those people get my grace because it's usually fairly obvious. Of but course. if you're just walking slow because you feel like it or you're on your phone, heaven help me. I will I will run you over. Wow. <laughs> For those of you who may be listening, that was not a legally binding <laughs> statement. I'm just kidding. Um, our, our lawyer says we have to put that in. <laughs> so don't get sued when Jerry mows down a slow walker. Correct. All right. Next also has to do with driving. Yeah. And you are... Okay, could we have a quick talk real quick? Mm -hmm. Between you and I, we would differ on who is the better driver. You think you're the better driver. I think I'm the better driver. But yeah. which one of us is the driver that gets the most rageful quickly? Me. 100%. Not even a competition. Um, oh, I man. I feel like there are parts of driving that I am better at. There are parts of driving that you're better at. I agree with that. Um, but you can usually keep your temper a lot better than me. Yeah. I, so this one is people who drive below the speed limit. Okay. Now, hold on. Let me let me give a couple like qualifying statements. Right. Because there are times, especially living in like a winter climate like Alaska. Right. There are times that driving below the speed limit is what you have to do. Correct. Right. So there are situations where driving below the speed limit, what you're referring to is people who are driving so slow that they are absolutely putting others on the road in danger. Right. Well, and not even that slow. Like, yes, there are roads here in Alaska where it's like the speed limit is 60 and people are going 35. Right. Get off the road because you are too scared to drive. You right. should not be driving. Get off. Um, but if you're going, you know, 50 in a 60, get off the road. Yeah. Or hang out in that right lane where you are where you belong. So this is what I was going to say. I don't mind that they're on the road. I mind that they're in any place other than the right lane. Right. Like, y'all hang out in the right lane and mosey. Correct. Get out of the rest of us who are in a race. Right. And if there's only one lane, go the damn speed limit or don't drive. One thing I really love here in Alaska <laughs> is we have this law that if you delay, I think it's three or five vehicles. I don't mm -hmm. remember which it is. I think um, five. You have to pull over and yeah. let them pass. So on a lot of our roads in Alaska, you know, we have like RVs. There's people up here with RVs and they don't always go fast. Um, but if you're delaying more than five vehicles, you, you can, have to pull over. Right. You can get a ticket. Yeah. Because there are five cars behind you. Going I love lower that. than the speed limit. And so, so yeah, to me, the whole like slower or like going below the speed limit, do that in your lane. If, if the speed limit is 60 and you're going 35 or 40 in the left hand lane, <laughs> Sherry might mow you down. Well, and then you caused me to break the law because I'm going to pass you on the right, which is also not legal. And I, but I just can't not pass you. Is it not legal to pass on the right? It's not legal to pass on the right. I do it a lot. Well, sure, because there's dumbasses that are in the left lane. Also, just so you guys know, if you're new to the Leg Life Podcast, this is our not so family friendly <laughs> platform. Um, as Sherry will prove time and time again. Sure. I love you very much. Sorry. Nope, you're fine. Okay, next. This. And this this, no, okay, the next one <laughs> is a little similar. Yeah. I feel like we should have broken these up a little bit better because I think your blood pressure is getting um, concerningly high right now. Well, I think these are all, like, that's why I gave a little <laughs> caveat at the beginning. Like, these are all a little bit, like, silly, but also kind of anxiety-inducing. So, what's the next one? Because it's very similar for you. <sighs> Slow grocery cart shoppers. Like, <laughs> I just... And here's the thing. I am 5'1 on a good day. Like, I am not tall. I have these stubby little legs. What? It's not like I am, like, plowing through things. Like, I walk pretty slow anyway. Mm -hmm. But if you are moseying through the grocery store, just browsing, stay out of the way of other people because people like me just want to go in and get what I need and leave. I don't want to be there for an hour and a half because I'm stuck behind you. So here's the problem I have with this one. 
There is no problem with this one. Well, okay. <laughs> Let me explain. It's on the freeway. It's easy to say, you go slow, you go in this lane. The problem with grocery stores is we don't have lanes. No, I know. I wish we had lanes. But you know, I think... No, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, so because I think there's somebody who just naturally is slower for whatever reason, and the lane that they're in or the aisle that they're in is only wide enough for two, and they've got to get to their Campbell soup. You know what I mean? And so that's the hard part is that it's almost like a slow driver on a two-lane road. Um, there's just not the way to get around them like there is on a freeway. Right. So I think what we need are grocery stores with a passing lane. I think we need grocery stores with <laughs> aisles wide enough for three carts. And the, the aisle in the middle is just for like blowing by slow pokes. Well, or just people with situational awareness. Okay. Because there is, I don't, I've never, for, in the United States, there, I have not been to a grocery store where there's not space at least for two carts. Oh, sure. So if you are just moseying down or if you're stopped in front of something and trying to decide what you want scooch as far over as you can get totally and don't stop where there's another person stopped on the other side without a doubt like just don't do it like that and that's where i'm just like if you have somebody behind you do what you can to get out of their way i was in fred meyer yesterday buying stuff for a work event and there was a person in the chip aisle i, I don't think i ever ever remember seeing this before uh, she had her cart sideways in the aisle. Oh, no, no, While no. she looked for something. Like, literally, no way to get past any other way. Like, sideways in the middle. Like, it's like she was, it's like she was turning around and halfway through just decided to stop and browse. And um, so, I'm, I'm usually pretty shy. Like, I will inwardly get angry <laughs> and be cursing this person. True. But... I don't usually say something, but those kinds of people, I will like move their cart and say, excuse me. Well, it's funny because I, I actually thought of you when I was in this situation and I did think Sherry and I would handle this very differently. You want to know what I did? What'd you do? I turned around and walked around. Like, turned no, around thank and went you. the other way. No, if they're taking up the entire aisle, they need to know you're being rude. Yeah, you're inconsiderate. Right. And so I will just, I will move their cart out of the way and, or like kind of try to like obviously try to get my cart around and be like, hey, excuse me. You just bumper cars it. Just absolutely plow. <laughs> just plow through. Yeah, plow through. Ugh. We need um, grocery aisle police with like a little, yes. woo, woo, like a little light. You're arrested. You're 86 arrested. 86 from the store. And if you get like a grocery store police, you have to pay 25% more in your groceries. Yeah. Your price just went up. I like it. Okay. So that's, that's the next thing. <laughs> yeah. um, it, the next one kind of has a little similarity. Has to do with grocery stores but or any other kind of stores. Yeah, or really any place in public at this point. Any place in public. So one of, in my opinion, one of the best things of the last 15 months mm -hmm. has been personal space. Personal now, space. Now, here's what I will say. I love hugs. You guys know I'm a physical touch person. I don't mind when people are close to me, even strangers. But there are situations where I'm just like, okay, like you're awkwardly close to me right now. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like this, this is a little bit weird. Um, and so what we're talking about here is, for an example, you're standing in line waiting to check out a grocery store. Mm -hmm. And three inches behind you, you feel the presence of another human who felt the need to get right up on your behind. Correct. Why? Why? If your cart runs into me, if your basket touches me, if I can feel your breath... <laughs> back the hell up like it is not necessary to be that close yeah we're all gonna get there well it's like like even watching some like disney vlogs recently uh just about like people waiting in line like being super close i'm like oh hell no no it's no. not necessary now if i'm with somebody i will drape all over them <laughs> right like sure <laughs> i have no problem with that um but like the random person like don't i i think the breath thing that's a good thing if i can feel your body heat right <laughs> Like, there's a concern. Take three steps back. Take three steps back. So that's the thing. <laughs> just people who invade your personal space. People yep. who get closer than they ever need to. And to be fair, that's one... This is one that our friend Desi brought up. Yes. And we were both like, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. This is so true. It's a good one. Yep. Now, the next one for me, <laughs> this may be the... T well, no. It, it, this is a top two for me of this entire list. A yeah, I think so. top two for me for sure. Yeah. Um, y'all. <laughs> People who use their speaker phones in public. 
Oh Stop. my gosh. We don't all want to hear your conversation. We don't all need to hear your conversation. If you cannot hear them, uh, like if you can't hear like through your phone, call them back when you're home. Or get a new phone. Or get a new phone or get AirPods or something. Like we do not need to hear your full conversation. It's bad enough when somebody talks really loud on their phone in public right. and I can hear their side of the conversation. Right. But when you have it on speakerphone and we can all hear it, mm -hmm. stop. Just stop. Unless there is like, I'm trying to think of any situation where that is necessary no. and I can't think of one. For sure, no. Um, just like this, this to me, when I hear it, I just, I dr it drives me crazy. And I will say, this is not like labeling. I feel like most of the time, it probably is a hearing thing. Because right. it seems like it tends to be older people, mm -hmm. and it could be that the speaker phones, uh, the speaker phone is louder than their earpiece, right? So it's easier to hear. Sure. So I get that, but there has to be another option. There has to be there. Like, again, is it so urgent that you had to take that phone call right that second? Probably not. You can call them back, and if it is urgent, get earphones step outside. or step outside step or outside. That's just my thing. something like. Where are your little headphones? Oh. Like, it just, it drives me crazy. Absolutely. And it usually, it tends to be super loud. Like, if, if they're on speakerphone, they're turned all the way up. And I, for sure, have heard things that were so highly inappropriate that I was like, I don't think you knew that that person was going to say that because <laughs> it's on speakerphone. And all of us here trying to buy deli meat just heard that. Yep. Drives stop. me crazy. Just Please stop. stop. Um... <laughs> Okay, the next thing is a little bit unique to us. Yeah. And this is something, if we have other Alaskan listeners, mm -hmm. um, you will relate to this one. The rest of you are probably like, what, what? are you talking about? What's that, Sherry? <sighs> Shipping to Alaska. So you go online, you're like, you know what? There's a new lamp from Ikea that I want. Mm -hmm. Most of you and your fancy U.S. locations go online, you place your order, and Ikea's like, oh yeah, we can ship to you. You're in the United States. So here... Have your, have your item. Mm -hmm. We go online to Ikea. We're like, you know what? We want that lamp. Ikea is like, sorry, we only shipped the United States. We are part of the United States. We are. And I think that a lot of people don't know that. And really, like, there's so many times that I go to check out at whatever online store and they say they don't ship internationally. So help me, Lord Jesus. This makes me so upset. Yes. Like, if, if you don't ship to Alaska and Hawaii, like, I'm actually okay with that. That's fine. I think it's, I think it's like lame because we kind of figured out the shipping thing in a global economy, like get on it. You can ship, like the UK can ship to us. Why can't Washington ship to us? Well, that's what's so weird. But for me, the thing that like drives me crazy is when they say, oh, we don't ship international or we only ship the United States. I'm just like, okay, like, is there a manager available? Right. Because we're going to have like a geography lesson real quick. Can I show you a globe? It drives me crazy. Uh... Um, and it just... It honestly makes me never want to purchase from you ever again. Well, there are there are brands that I would spend a lot of money with. Yeah. That don't ship to Alaska. And I intentionally avoid them even when we travel. Even if we are right next to their store, I say no thank you because you suck. With, <laughs> there you go. You suck. <laughs> um, okay. It, I, it makes us both so mad. Do we need a breath or are we okay? We're good. <sighs> because this next... This next one is 100% you. So this, well, I, should, I should hope so. <laughs> and this next one may be my other top two with um, with speakerphones. Gentlemen, guys, I'm talking to you. Okay? <laughs> We're standing at the urinals, right? You got to go pee. I get it. We all pee. Um, if you come into a restroom and we're standing next to each other at urinals... Don't you dare look at me and talk to me. Okay? This is what I told Sherry. I was like, unless we're having sex, you should not talk to me when my penis is in my hand. Okay? Like, can somebody make me a sign family that says... Channel. Yeah. Fam sorry. Family friendly. Um, It's just true. Like, if my penis is in my hand, number one, how about we not make eye contact unless we're hooking up? Or two, like, for sure, now's not the time to ask if I have any weekend plans. Right. No. Yeah. Guys, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> never once, I have had a lot of friends in my life, a lot of friends, never once have they been like, hey, how'd you meet Bill? Be like, oh, crazy story. So we met at the urinal. That story's never happened. Right. In fact, we don't want to be friends. if you talk to me at the urinal, I make a mental note that I will never be your friend. <laughs> 
<laughs> because I don't need that kind of person in my life. It's just weird. Yeah, I'm going to add a little addendum to this. Okay. Um, and we, we sort of touched on this when we were first talking about it, but people who, like, if there's a whole line of urinals... Oh, stand right stand next to Stand right you. next to you. Yeah. It's going to be... I'm going to go for the same with the stalls. Like, there are no urinals in women's bathrooms. Okay. So I can't relate to that. We do have our own personal stalls. But if I am in a whole big bathroom and I you take the, the one right next to me... Mm-hmm. Just don't. Interesting. It's just weird and awkward. And I'm like, there are 8,000 other stalls in here. So I have a women's bathroom question. Mm-hmm. This podcast is taking a turn. Um, with guys talking from urinal to urinal, mm-hmm. it's a big no-no because it's just weird. It's just weird. With ladies, is there any talking between stalls? No. Um, I don't think so. Thank God. You have it. Good. I think, yeah, I think occasionally. I think we were saying like the biggest thing in the women's bathrooms like that is just an issue is children crawling under or putting their head under and like saying hi or looking through the crack of the door um mothers control your children i cannot think of one possible situation where i would ever condone any living being to be on the bathroom (laughs) or on the floor of a public bathroom right it's a good life lesson to teach your kid maybe don't do that so, yeah, there you go. Don't let your kid do that. Gentlemen. It's gross and it's awkward for the person that they're staring at. Gentlemen, don't you dare look at me and make eye contact and talk to me while my penis is in my hand. Okay. Okay? <laughs> Deal? Sure. Sure. All right. <laughs> Next. This Next. is one that both you and I really get frustrated at. Yes. And this is another one where occasionally I will just sit there and stew. Yep. You will. Um, but sometimes I... Make it known how yeah. unhappy I am. What I love is how you make this known. Well, first of all, what is this, Sherry? Talking or texting in a movie theater. Dark theater, bright screen. like. And you know what's weird? It always seems like the people who do that are sitting right down front, doesn't it? Yes. Why? Why? Ugh. Well, probably because, I mean, we can see them. <laughs> so oh, if they're behind point. us, we can't actually see. <laughs> I'm a moron. <laughs> um, but yes, why? like turn off your phone. You want to know what my favorite thing that you do in this situation is? Because this is where you get passive aggressive. <laughs> because you're not just like, um, excuse me, we can see your phone. It would be great if you turned that off. Sherry is the throat clear. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. Or like, the, or the shh, shh. Like the really high pitch <laughs> shh. And it's just like, it's so funny to me. Oh my gosh. I just, it's so rude. I, I cannot fathom being that rude in a movie theater. So we were at a movie, and I don't remember what movie it was. I don't remember, but recently. Recently. Mm -hmm. And somebody in the movie received a phone call. Yeah. And answered it. But then here's the part that got me the most frustrated. Like, okay, I get that. But at the same time, it's like, maybe you have a job that you have to answer the phone. I get that. You know, totally fine. But then, you know, you answer the call, step out into the hallway, right? Mm -hmm. Go out of the theater and finish the call. This person didn't (laughs) leave the theater. You know how movie theaters have that, like... Um, just sort of that like entry hallway. Like hallway, yeah. Yeah, like right outside the theater, but it's all still open and we can all it's hear all you. It's all in the theater. Yeah, he did not go through the doors and out to where right. we couldn't hear him. He stood right there. He stood right there and had the entire phone conversation. And I was like, holy Lord, what is happening I right was now? about to grab Adam's popcorn and throw it at him. It was ridiculous. It was so dumb. And I was just like, how rude do you have to be? Yeah. Like, I, it just, I cannot fathom being that person like it's so rude so if your phone goes off in the theater please leave just leave step outside the doors or don't go (laughs) like if you're on call and you have to be able to take like important phone calls don't go to the movies i don't know about that i don't i don't mind they go to the movies i don't even mind that they answer the call but just like step outside right (sighs) step outside sherry's huffing and puffing because if you do you know what you're gonna get from sherry a very harsh shh yeah you are or a yep for sure it's my favorite. So it passive just, aggressive and so wonderful. Me crazy. Yes, it does. Um, okay, this is the last one. And this is very much you. This is 100% me because you don't really notice these. Uh, no, not don't really. I don't notice. These. <laughs> like, there's no really needed in that sentence at all. Uh, what do we got here, Sherry? And this um, kind of harkens back a little bit to one of our previous podcasts that yep. we did on grammar. Um, you all know I'm a grammar Nazi. What? Um, it drives me crazy when there is incorrect grammar, but especially on public signs. So let's tell them what has happened 
that caused this to be like so recent for us so recent so our mailboxes we have we live in um townhouses and so we have a whole big like wall of mailboxes Mm -hmm. um at the entrance to our our buildings and they i think probably our our hoa or somebody put up a sign thanking the postal workers Uh uh-huh First of all, Which great, is great. Sen- great sentiment. Fantastic. Yep. I am all for that. They have worked hard all through COVID. It's been a mess. For sure. Um, they deserve our thanks. However, if you choose to do this, please make sure that you are using proper grammar. Mm-hmm. Because I found the wrong word. They used we instead of us. And they spelled heroes wrong. Like, drop it into Microsoft Word before you print this sign. Yeah. Just to make sure, because Microsoft Word will fix it for you. You don't actually even need to know your own damn language. But it just drives me crazy when you're, like, you put up this big professional sign, and it just makes all of us look like idiots. And you've said this before, like, when we go to a business and they have, like, a sign hanging up, and there's grammar mistakes on it, like, you instantly judge that business. Like, I will probably not keep going to your business because clearly there are morons running it (laughs) which i understand is so judgmental and i'm okay with that because it's just it drives me like if i can't trust you to spell a word correctly on a sign that you're going to put up in your business yeah i clearly can't actually trust you to do anything correct it's so funny it's so so (laughs) funny Uh, it makes me so mad okay so you guys those are our 12 yeah now the reality is, is there's probably 500 more things. Oh, sure. And it's probably one of those things that <laughs> as we go through life, we're going to be like, I can make a podcast about this. Yeah. Maybe, you... we'll, maybe we'll have a part two. Oh, I'm sure we probably will have a part <laughs> two. Because here's what I want to know. I want to know from you guys, what are the things that we did not cover? Or maybe the things that we did cover that you were like, oh, yes. Yeah. That also um, are irrational, like rage inducing items for you. Yeah. I need to know. We need to know. Yep. So here, <laughs> here's what here's what we're going to do. This is what we do every week. Um, it doesn't really work great, but gosh darn it, we don't have a better option. <laughs> right. Over on the Leg Life YouTube channel, if you go over to youtube.com slash leglifeak, um, there's a tab called community. And every week we post a graphic that has the topic of the week. So this one will mm-hmm. say like irrational rage. <laughs> um, and so below that, you can leave a comment and let us know what you thought about this topic. Let us know the things that induce a rational rage for you. Yeah, we want to know. Oh my gosh, I want to know. <laughs> Except I feel like reading everybody's responses is going to be like, oh my gosh. Yes! That's it. Uh. How did we forget that one? How did we forget that one? Yeah, and honestly, we had a few more on the list and we took some off because we just felt like it was going to just go on and on and on. And there's a point where for like our own health and blood pressure, <laughs> it's like we probably should, We need to just move along. We probably should just... <laughs> move along but friends we love you guys so much thanks for listening uh episode 24 can you believe that our next episode is number 25 in a row and we haven't missed one i know i'm really proud of this and you know what's really cool sherry Mm -hmm. with this episode if my math adds up correctly i believe this episode is the one that will cross 10,000 listens since we started a podcast that's exciting. That's insane. Watch nobody listen to it. They're like, eh, I don't need to listen to this one. They're like, uh, their podcast causes me irrational rage. <laughs> <laughs> so lame. Yeah. You are entitled to your wrong opinion. Wow. Get some sassy. <laughs> you want to aggressively shush them before we leave? Maybe. Maybe you do. <laughs> All right, friends. We love <laughs> Shh. All right, friends. We love you guys so much. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next week on the Lug Life Podcast.